Did anyone here graduate in the 1990s with the single-minded goal to become the next Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman? I know that a lot of us high school drama club presidents, like myself, felt that this was their destiny. But I started my Cinderella story in a bit more of a pragmatic way. You see, I didn't want to wait around for my knight in shining armor to come. I decided that I was going to stack the deck and make this dream come true. Fast forward 10 years, and I'm speeding down the 405 in LA in a hooker's outfit, questioning my life, reality, and choices. What happened? I had stacked the deck. I did everything that I could do, all the degrees, a BFA, an MFA, a union cards, an agent, an independent film, commercials. And yet, I'm pulling into the parking lot of my night job as an ESL teacher, still wearing my drugged-out hooker's outfit. I sneak out of the car and into the faculty bathroom, and I'm washing my face and pulling on a pair of pants, and I think about my students and the stories that they've told me about how they come to class each night. They're amazing students, ages 18 to 81, so diverse. And as I walk up the steps to class, I really wonder what that glass slipper of life really looks like. This is when I realize that when I had stacked that deck and done all the things right to become the next film actress, what I'd really learned was the art of theater. And what I loved about theater didn't exist in film for me. You see, anything could be changed. A light was wrong, a light was wrong, and cut! We were all instantly back at places. And I realized I was living in a very different 1990s movie. I felt like Bill Murray in Groundhog Day. Every audition, 20 to 30 reflections of myself looking back at me, same hair, same eyes, same height, Groundhog's Day. Anything that I did as an actress in a film could be left on the cutting room floor by the editors many months after I had moved on to another project. I didn't feel like an integral part of the whole. I felt left out and expendable. But I realized that my ESL students needed me, and I needed them. I wanted to help them as they carved out a life for themselves in this ever-changing world. You know, what's interesting is that at the time in California, instructors in ESL classrooms could not speak to their children, to the students, which mine were adults actually, in their native language. And my students did not speak any English. And so I did the only thing that I knew how to do at the time. I transformed our classroom into a theater. <laughs> I was miming eating apples and how to sign employment contracts. We were all learning together, and it felt really wonderful. I taught them theater improvisation exercises as a way to learn, and they were really doing well. They would come in each night and someone would say um, that they got a, a promotion or, wow, they, they finally were able to fill out that job application. And I realized that they were not living in Groundhog's Day. They were moving and changing, and we were all an integral part of each other's whole. In theater, we practice hospitality, extending goodwill and trust and respect to one another. This is what we do. <laughs> There's this amazing high that one feels on stage when you look into another actor's eye and you think, it's you and me, we're in this together. Our success or failure is reliant upon one another. I trust you. I know that you must trust me. Even though we have very different goals, 
different personal goals, professional goals, and certainly different character goals. Yet, we work together for theater to happen. I once played Helen Keller in the production of A Miracle Worker. And I had my own personal goals for the production. You know, for example, when a critic came, I wanted to make sure I got a good review. But I also had to hold my character goals in my head. You know, Helen Keller is a deaf, blind, and mute child that I was playing. And so she could not use eye contact or her words to express herself to another. Well, obviously, I could do that <laughs> as an actress and who I am. But I could not do that on stage because I had to hold her reality as true. She was also fearful of a lot of things and thus, at this age in her life, very controlling. And in one particular scene, there was a choreographed fight scene between Helen and her teacher, Annie Sullivan, over the proper way to eat eggs. <laughs> I wanted to eat them with my hands because that's the only way I'd ever learned. And she wanted to teach me to eat them with a fork. And so in this particular fight, we had two very contradictory character goals, hand versus fork. But as actresses, we had to aid and work in unison to help each other achieve these contradictory goals. One night, we were um, fighting, and the, something very strange happened that wasn't it supposed to happen. A plate fell off the table and broke into a bunch of pieces on the floor. And instantly, we knew as actresses that we had to hold another reality as true, and we had to improvise, because in a few minutes, we were going to be rolling around in that section on the stage. And we couldn't do that, because we had to keep the audience's suspension of disbelief as real, and so we had to improvise. And if we didn't, then the audience would stop thinking that it was two characters on stage fighting and start to worry about us as two actors and our safety. This is what we do in the theater every day, right? And these skills are easily transferable to our everyday lives. You know, you might wonder, well, what happens if an actor or an actress cannot um, do this on stage? They cannot, they cannot hold these contradictory ideas as true and valid. Well, the show doesn't really work, and the reviews are bad, and ultimately, the show does not go on. This is expertly portrayed in the Academy Award-winning film Birdman. Michael Keaton plays a washed-up film actor who decides he will revive his career by writing, directing, and starring in a Broadway show. But he can extend no hospitality to his fellow actors. He does everything wrong. He breaks every rule of theater. First, he tries to actually have sex with his scene partner on stage in front of a live audience. Next, he brings alcohol on stage. And it finally comes to the point where he brings a real gun on stage and he shoots himself in the face. He could not hold two realities. He could only hold his character's reality and couldn't even hold his own personal reality. And thus, his show did not go on. What we do in theater is this every day. We teach it, it's not difficult to learn. And you know what? You don't have to be a famous actress or actor to be able to use theater to gain these necessary skills. I, you know, in that theater, in that ESL classroom, the students taught me something that was really, really important. And they taught me the power that theater has to impact the real world. You know, I'm fortunate to have become a professor of theater and, you know, more importantly, theater education. 
And I often say to myself, you know, the youth of today, who will be our leaders of tomorrow, need these skill-building devices to be able to practice hospitality in this ever-changing world. And so I wonder, you know, why do I do this? I do it because I believe in humanity, and I believe that we all need these skills in our everyday lives, but that they are really hard to have in your everyday life. When you see someone else who has contradictory goals from yours, that you can both pursue your different vectors and be part of the same whole. But it's easy. And in the theater, it's fun. We can build the skill and then use it in our everyday lives. In one of my classes, which is geared towards students with absolutely zero theater background, my students are able to learn this skill in one semester and turn around and teach it to elementary school students. Same semester. I'll give you an example. I teach a theater improvisation unit, and theatrical improvisation is basically two or more actors on stage, you know, working out an unscripted scene where they don't know the lines and they don't know the ending. And in order for the scene to work, they have to abide by a few rules, right? I teach these rules. One of the most important rules in, theater, in improvisation is the idea that you cannot deny the other person on stage. So it's, we call it the yes and rule. So you just cannot deny what the other person says as true. So I'll give you an example. Imagine I'm on stage with someone and they come running up and they say, oh yes, I'm so excited. It's finally the day we're gonna get married. And I don't really feel like getting married in this particular scene. What I can't do is I can't deny what that person has just said is true. I can't say, I don't know what you're talking about. We are not getting married today. We are going to get an ice cream in this car. The scene would just totally die. But I could say, yes, you're true. <laughs> it's right. The day has finally come. We're getting married. I have to tell you something. I had an affair. You see, I'm probably not going to get married in this scene. But I didn't deny what the other actor said as being true. I just said yes. And I'm going to add a little something else. My students get this, and within a few weeks, they're able to actually give feedback to other students when they're watching the scenes as to whether or not a scene worked or didn't work based on whether or not the actors were able to say yes and. And then they turn around and teach this skill to elementary school children. One of the biggest problems that we have in today's youth and in schools is the concept of bullying. Bullying? is basically the denial of someone. I deny X, Y, or Z about you, and thus I bully you. In theater improvisation, we learn that we can have acceptance and individuality at the same time. Yes, and. It is often said that theater is a mirror of society. I challenge you to take this a step further and allow theater to move from being a mere reflection to becoming your instructive reality on how to live in society. You are an actor in the improv called life. I encourage you to sit down at the table and eat with your hands while someone else is eating with a fork. You can pursue your goals in concert while others pursue theirs. Say yes to the improv that is life, and your show will go on and on and on. Thank you.